Good afternoon. I am Pastor Bob Ozel from the Bethel African Methodist Episcopal Church in Corsicana, Texas. Hope everybody is having a good day. I'm talking to you today about a tribute to Alex Haley on his 99th birthday. Alex has not, he left here in 1992, so he only lived to be 70, but he did a lot during those 70 years. Were he still alive, he'd be 99 today. Alexander Murray Palmer Haley was born on August 11, 1921. And uh, he was an American author and uh, very prolific and very good at what he did. He was born in Ithaca, New York. His father was Simon Alexander Haley. At the time, he was in graduate school at Cornell University. He taught agriculture. And like many African Americans of the day, the older Haley had to overcome many barriers to achieve success in the field of education. And Alex Haley, uh, Simon Alexander Haley had four children. There was George, who became a lawyer, Julius who became an architect, Lois who taught music, and Alex Haley who became a writer. And uh, Simon Haley taught agriculture at Al Alabama A&M University. But uh, his wife, uh, her name was Bertha George. She uh, grew up in Henning, Tennessee, and that became known as Alex Haley's hometown. The family had African Mandinka, Cherokee, Scottish, and Irish roots. And Alex Haley spoke proudly of his father and the obstacles he had to overcome to achieve success in life. At the age of 15, Alex Haley followed the footsteps of his father in enrolling in Alcorn State University, an historically black college in Mississippi. The following year, he enrolled at Elizabeth City State College in Elizabeth City, North Carolina. But the following year, he withdrew from college. And when he turned 18, he joined the Coast Guard, and that began a 20-year career. He started out as a messmate, which, in given the racism of the time, was about as good a job as a black man could expect in the Coast Guard. He often said the Coast Guard was his university. He started out as a messmate, and when he retired 20 years later, he held the position of chief journalist. He had always been interested in writing, and his first real writing experiences occurred at sea. He owned a typewriter, and many of his uh, shipmates would come to him, and they would give him information about their wives and girlfriends uh, back on land. And during World War II, it said their, the biggest enemy the Coast Guard men faced was not so much the Japanese, but boredom. There wasn't a whole lot to do. And they would write letters back home, but many didn't know how to do that. So Alex would, would type out the letters for them. And then they would write the letters in their own handwriting and send them back to the shore to eventually arrive uh, with the ladies. And they would pay him to do this. So this was his first professional writing. And again, when he retired, he held the rank of chief journalist, recognizing his literary abilities. And he won many awards and recognitions during his 20 year career in the Coast Guard. After he retired, he became a freelance writer, wrote for a number of publications, including the Reader's Digest and Playboy. Uh, 
His Playboy interviews included a number of prominent people, such as Miles Davis, the jazz musician. Um, he interviewed the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr. And one of the more controversial interviews was with George Lincoln Rockwell, leader of the American Nazi Party. He agreed to, Rockwell agreed to meet with Haley only after gaining assurance that he was not Jewish. And if you've seen Roots, The Next Generation, that's in the last uh, segment. Rockwell is played by Norman Brando, and Alex Haley is played by James Earl Jones. The uh, interview was recreated, and it went okay, and Haley conducted himself in a professional manner, even though Rockwell kept a handgun on the table throughout the interview. And he also interviewed the boxer Muhammad Ali, uh, Jack Ruby's defense attorney Melvin Belli, entertainer Sammy Davis Jr., football player Jim Brown, TV host Johnny Carson, and music producer Quincy Jones. By far the most famous interview that Alex Haley did for Playboy evolved into a full-length book. And that was the interview he did with Malcolm X during uh, he first uh, interviewed him and he wanted to hear about Malcolm. Malcolm spent most of the time talking about the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, his spiritual leader. And Eventually, there were 50 in-depth interviews conducted, and Malcolm uh, told his life story to Alex Haley, and Alex wrote it down in first person as if uh, Malcolm were speaking. And um, he wrote an article on the Nation of Islam for Reader's Digest and an interview with Malcolm for Playboy. In the autobiography that was published in 1965, it describes Malcolm's life from street criminal to national spokesman for the Nation of Islam to his conversion to Orthodox or Sunni Islam following his pilgrimage to Mecca. Uh, and, you know, his 1963 break with Elijah Muhammad and eventual assassination. It must have been a very eerie feeling he had. Malcolm took his red pen and went over a lot of the stuff that Alex had written. He wanted some names not divulged and then once they completed the process he said let me read this over one more time because I don't think I'm going to be alive when this book comes out. He said I know there's black men watching every move I make, waiting their chance to kill me. Anybody who doubts this, they don't know the Muslims of the Nation of Islam. Malcolm also said that he realized he might die at the hands of some white racist or some brainwashed Negro who believed he was helping the white man by getting rid of him. And it was certainly uh, very vivid experience when he heard on February 21st, 1965 at the Audubon Ballroom in New York that Malcolm had been assassinated. And in the TV miniseries Roots the Next Generations it shows James Earl Jones playing Alex Haley back in Henning, Tennessee sitting on the front porch talking with his cousin Georgia Anderson. She was the youngest of the women who when he was a child would sit on the front porch that included his grandmother and some other 
aunts. And they would talk all the time about the family history. And in this particular episode, she asked him, George Anderson asked Alex Haley, what was the name of your friend who got himself killed? He said, Malcolm X. And what does that mean? Well, X represents the lost African name. She said, we don't need an X. We know what our name is. Our name is Kente. We're descended from an African named Kunta Kente. And he was determined to find this old African. And the uh, story told, it was 1976, that, uh, oh, by the way, uh, I don't have my copy of the autobiography of Malcolm X with me. I, it's at the church in my other office. But uh, I received my first copy of the autobiography of Malcolm X on May 22, 1972. It was a gift for my 21st birthday. It's been described as one of the most 10 influential books in American uh, history and it certainly was a great impact on my personal thinking. This is Roots, the saga of an American family by Alex Haley and uh, he it's interesting uh, in his dedication it wasn't planned that Roots researching and writing finally would take 12 years just by chance, it's being published in the bicentennial year of the United States. So I dedicate Roots as a birthday offering to my country, within which most of Roots happened. And it is based on his family's history going back to the slavery days. Started with Kunta Kinte kidnapped in the Gambia in 1767, transported to the province of Maryland to be sold as a slave. Haley claimed to be a seventh generation descendant of Kunta Kinte, and his work on the novel involved 12 years of research, intercontinental travel, and writing. He went to the village of Jufari, where Kunta Kinte allegedly grew up, and listen to the tribal historian known as the Grio tell the story of Kente's capture. He traced the records of the ship Lord Legionnaire in which he claimed carried his ancestors to the America. Not everybody fully accepts that story I realize. Uh, the story is that when Kunta Kente uh, came to America he became a slave uh, to Dr. William Waller in uh, North Carolina. And he had a daughter, he married a woman named Belle, had a daughter named Kizzy, who was eventually sold to a man named Tom Lee. Tom Lee raped her and she became pregnant with a boy whom she named George. Master Lee was involved in cockfighting and George accompanied his master at various cockfights and became as a result known as Ch Chicken George. Uh, he got married and he had a number of children, including a son. They at this time were uh, owned by some people named Murray. And Tom Murray was a slave blacksmith, a very prominent man in his community. Of course, he got his freedom after the Civil War. Tom 
had a daughter named Cynthia who married a man named Will Palmer who was in the lumber business and they had a daughter named Bertha George. Bertha George married Simon Alexander Haley and their oldest child was Alex Haley. The story of Roots had a great deal of impact in America. There was um, a lot of controversy about it, a lot of people who couldn't believe a lot of this stuff had happened, and there were some who found it surprising that slave owners were known to make, uh, well, to form, to have sexual relations with female slaves. If you look within the African American community, you see so many different shades. I mean, there had to be some mixing somewhere, so I can't see how that was so surprising. Now, many of these liaisons including that of one of the most famous of Thomas Jefferson and the slave woman Sally Hemings. Was it love? Was it lust? Was it romance? Was it rape? We'll probably never know. But anyway, uh, there was some great deal of this in Alex Haley's family. Roots was eventually published in 37 languages. He won a special Pulitzer Prize for the work in 1977. That same year it was adapted as a popular TV miniseries by the same name on ABC. The serial reached record-breaking 130 million viewers. Roots emphasized that African Americans have a long history. Not all that history is necessarily lost, as many had believed. His popularity also sparked a greatly increased public interest in the field of genealogy. And like I say, the first uh, series came out in 1977 and it was aired again a couple of years later. It was also in 1979 that the sequel miniseries, Roots the Next Generations, continued the story of Kunta Kinte's descendants. And the last segment, it shows uh, Alex Haley portrayed by James Earl Jones uh, going to the village of Jufari and hearing the same story he had heard as a child that Kuta Kinte was uh, out cutting wood to make a drum he was captured sold into slavery and never heard from again and in this uh, particular very touching episode, uh, James Earl Jones in his role as Alex Haley st stands up and shouts, Kunta Kente, you old African, at last I have found you. And the uh, very popular, to say the least. Alex Haley was briefly a writer in residence at Hamilton College in Clinton, New York, where he began work on roots. And uh, he all was not smooth sailing for him, however. He faced two lawsuits that charged plagiarism and copyright infringement. One was brought by the author Margaret Walker, the author of Jubilee. Uh, Dr. Margaret Walker, uh, on February 18, 1994, had the pleasure of meeting her when she spoke at a luncheon I attended at the Junior Black Academy of Arts and Letters in downtown Dallas. Best wishes to Reverend Uzzle. Sincerely, Margaret Walker, Dallas, 
February 18, 1994. My treasure, this autographed copy of Jubilee. Her suit was dismissed. I also have a copy of uh, a book she wrote on how I wrote Jubilee. Um, she was unable to establish the case of plagiarism. However, the novelist Harold Corlander, author of The African, was successful. And there's many different places in which I think there were over 80 passages that were almost identical. And Alex finally admitted some of the passages from the African had made their way into roots. The case went to court in 1978 and Haley paid Corlander $650,000. Uh, that was more than he got in book royalties in the many not of books that he had written. And Harold Corlander's son later said it was not his dad's desire to be go down in history as the man who sued Alex Haley, but that's the way the ball bounces sometimes. And Professional genealogists have disputed some of Alex Haley's methodology. The Gambian griot Fafana turned out not to be a real griot, or griot, however they pronounce it. And uh, a number of people make the, made the claim that the man knew Alex Haley was coming. He had been prepped ahead of time, so he told him what he wanted to hear. Uh, a lot of tourists, a lot of money has come into Jufari, though, as a result of this. And even though Alex Haley was a Christian, he paid for the construction of a Muslim mosque in Jufari. His brother Julius, an architect, was the one who designed it. And he uh, wrote. At the time of his death, he was working on another book, which was originally published posthumously, Alex Haley's Queen, The Story of an American Family. And he left files in boxes. And an Australian screenwriter named David Stevens, a good friend of Alex Haley, ended up putting it all together. For publication and it was made into a miniseries as well. Roots is his mother's side. Queen is his father's side. The Tim Daly, a white actor, surprised people when he told them he would be playing the part of Alex Haley's great grandfather. The role of Colonel James Jackson Jr. in the movie Alex Haley's Queen. James Jackson Sr. came to America from Ireland, became wealthy, bought the or developed the Forks of Cypress Plantation in Alabama, and acquired a large number of slaves. When he died, his son, James Jackson, Jr., inherited it. David Stevens admits taking some liberties with the facts, and he states that in this book all the lineage statements are verified except the most critical one. He could find no written evidence that James Jackson, Jr. fathered Queen, and it probably doesn't exist. The story is, and the way it's depicted in the miniseries, on the night that uh, his father dies, James Jackson Jr. is very despondent. He goes to the weaving house where the slave woman, Easter, lives. And there he finds comfort in her arms. And on that night, Queen is conceived.
Tim Daly plays the part of James Jackson. Jasmine Guy plays the part of Easter. And Halle Berry plays the part of the grown-up queen. I forget the name of the little girl who played the young queen. But she... The way it's, it's depicted, we don't know how true this is. It appears that James Jackson really loved Easter. But because of the mores of the time, he could not marry her. He ended up marrying a white woman named Lizzie. But his relationship with Easter continued. James and Lizzie had a daughter born five years after Queen, who never acknowledged Queen as her sister. And uh, Easter dies before the end of the Civil War. Uh, James Jackson goes and fights as a colonel in the Confederate Army. He loses an arm in the war. And by the way, when Queen is born, it shows him entering her birth in the plantation ledger. Name of mother, Easter, name of father, a lioness put through there, refusing to acknowledge his child publicly, which was pretty much par for the course back in those days, it's sad to say. But... It's a good book. It's a good movie. Both of them are, to my opinion. I've read both of them. And, and so, a, uh, another good book that I just read last year is Alex Haley's Roots, an author odyssey by Adam Hennick. And Alex Haley had planned on writing some more books, but it appeared he didn't get around to it. Uh, he did something many of us would like to do, traveled around the country giving lectures, signing autographs, and was um, made some money that way. It was toward the end of his life he acquired a small farm in Clinton, Tennessee, and the farm is a few miles from the Museum of Appalachia, and Haley lived there until his death. After his death, his property was sold to the Children's Defense Fund, which calls it the Alex Haley Farm. The nonprofit organization uses the farm as a national training center and retreat site. An abandoned barn on the farm property was rebuilt in the, as a traditional barn using the design of architect Maya Lin. The building now serves as a library for the Children's Defense Fund. It's uh, He was giving a lecture, or was preparing to go give a lecture in Seattle, Washington, on February 10th, 1992, when 70-year-old Alex Haley died of a heart attack. He made millions of dollars from his writings. From what I understand, he died in debt, so there were bad investments and some other unwise decisions that were made. I don't know all the details. He inspired people to be more interested in black history and in genealogy. And I'm one of those. It took me nearly 40 years to write my book, The Durham's of Fairfield, an African-American genealogy. Deborah and I got married February 19, 1977. At the time, Alex Haley's roots was the going thing. And I was determined to do what he did. I began asking questions. 
over the years I have spoken at a number of Durham family reunions. This is a shirt from such a reunion. And I've told them, the people present, Alex Haley had Kunta Kente. You have Gobby. It was a couple of years ago at a Durham reunion in the Butler community of Freestone County, Texas. Deborah got up and made the statement while I'm the author of the book. She is the one with the Durham blood flowing in her veins, and that is very true. Her maternal grandmother uh, was Gladys Durham Henry. And as of yet, my book has not duplicated the success of Roots, but we trust that will someday and that we'll have our own TV miniseries. Deborah would like to have her, have Halle Berry play her. And, uh, my publisher said that he thought Brad Pitt should play me. But Alex Haley received many awards and recognition. 1977, the Spinger and Medal from the NAACP, and the Food Service Building at the U.S. Coast Guard Training Center, Petaluma, California, was named Haley Hall in honor of the author. Remember, he started out as a a cook in the Coast Guard. In 1999, the Coast Guard honored him by naming the cutter USCGC Alex Haley. Then, the U.S. Coast Guard an annually awards the Chief Journalist Alex Haley Award, named in honor of him uh, as their first Chief Journalist. Uh, it, it rewards individual authors and photographers who have had articles or photographs communicating the Coast Guard story published in internal newsletters or external publications. And in 2002, the Republic of South Korea posthumously awarded him the Korean War Service Medal that was created in 1951. And um, in Henning, Tennessee, there's a uh, Alex Haley Museum and Interpretive Center. I've not been up there yet. I have been invited to come sometime and give a presentation on the Durham's of Fairfield. And I look forward to doing that sometime after the pandemic is over. But I'm, I have uh, connected on Facebook with one relative of Alex Haley and uh, with the Interpretive Center staff and look forward to doing that someday. If he were still living, he'd be 99. And so I want to wish happy 99th birthday to Alex Haley. Have a good day.